Hello, cinema peeps. Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. What? Today is Tuesday? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we upload these every Tuesday. Right? It's like we actually have some sort of consistency to our channel. <laughs> how weird. How, how weird. But, um, <laughs> so me and my family watched the makings of The Mandalorian. Oh, yes. It's that eight, well, it's eight an eight-part documentary, but only four episodes are out right now. Mm-hmm. So we watched all four, and I was falling asleep in the second one. Oh, no. <laughs> my mom would just keep hitting me. She's like, are you sleeping? I'm like, no. <laughs> no, not sleeping. And then from the other end, you can hear my dad just snoring. And mom's like, oh, my God. Everybody's falling asleep. <laughs> not to say it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess, like, when... Because we officially finished the entire Star Wars tri- Well, not the entire, but I think pretty good chunk of the Star Wars media. Yay! <laughs> so in total, we watched the nine or three, six. Yeah, the nine core films, including the two subplot films and The Mandalorian. Wow, that's a lot of Star Wars content. <laughs> it was. And we still, uh, we didn't watch The Clone Wars, which is seven seasons of like 22 episodes. Okay, I think that's going way too far. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Rebels and Resistance that we didn't watch as well. Oh my God, but... Kaylee, you'll never come back. You'll never come, please go back. Please go back. <laughs> you know, it's never going to be done. <laughs> But, you know, I think we gave it a good hee-haw try, yeah. I think, personally. Well, good for you. Gold star. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a very fun journey. It was nice to watch it with my family. I just also enjoyed, because my mom, for the last Star Wars, she saw, on, I guess, on Rotten Tomatoes that it had a really bad score. Mm. So near the end, <laughs> every so often I just hear her be like, it's down another 2%. <laughs> In her mind, she's like, nope, this isn't, this isn't very good. Oh. And then for spoilers, people who haven't watched the film yet, if you haven't, go on Disney Plus now. Ray and Ky- Kylo Ren, or Ben Solo, have that weird kiss scene. Mm-hmm. And my dad's just like, ah! Ew! <laughs> I was like, yes, the reaction I was hoping for. Oh, I cringed and just groaned <laughs> when I oh, saw yeah. it in theaters. I was like, no, why? <laughs> my eyeballs rolled to the back of my skull. I was like, oh. Although I think the even the lead up to that was weird to me. Because like when she died, like she has her eyes open, which is already like really weird to me. <laughs> so when he's like holding her and she, she, her eyes are just wide open. I was like, really? Everybody thought that was a, an okay decision? The director, like, couldn't CGI some eyelids over that or some shit? Because that just looks weird. But, you know, that's their choice. That's what they decided to do. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's up to them, I guess. I I, I don't know. I wouldn't done it, but that's just me. Um, But, but yeah, it was a fun time. It was a fun thing to do with the family. Something to look forward to every day. But now we're a little lost because we don't know what to do. And everybody was asking me, they're like, so what's next? I'm like, I don't know. I was like, I'm hoping maybe we could watch... Fast and Furious. Fast and (laughs) Furious. I actually saw an article of them saying that they're going to put all of them on Netflix. (gasps) Oh, no. (laughs) So it is true. (laughs) Although I was saying I was hoping we could do Harry Potter. Ooh, that's a good one. And skip the Fantastic Beast movies because they're not very good. Would you attempt to do the Marvel Universe or are you like, no? I mean, I actually wouldn't mind. I know my mom's always talked about it, but like... It's so, like, it's so large. Mm-hmm. But I think for that one specifically, I don't think we'd watch them in chronological order. I know there's, like, guides online that will, you know, show what to watch. Yeah. But I just think it might be too much. Mm. So we might just do it as as they were released, maybe, or at least roughly as they were released. But I'll swing that by my parents and see what they say. <laughs> Because that should keep you busy for a while. <laughs> right? I actually was looking on Disney Plus last night after we watched the making of The Mandalorian to see how many of them they have on there. And they're still missing a couple, which I think we might be lucky and find them on Netflix. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure we own all of them. Oh, yeah. So I think we're safe there. Oh, actually, you know what? Marathon that you should start because we were talking about it in one of the episodes is the Transformers series. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you said you'd do it. Um, you said you'd do it. Yeah, after the Harry Potter one and after the Marvel one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're squeezing it at the end there. If you have time during quarantine, you know, because... <laughs> All the time in the world. <laughs> I want to say, though, for the making of The Mandalorian, have you watched it? I have not. Okay. Um, so, I don't know how... I guess it's not really spoiler, because it's just talking about the making of The Mandalorian. <laughs> but I guess I was expecting something a little bit different. Oh, yeah? Because a lot of it is just them sitting at a table talking. So, I think that's why I accidentally fell asleep, because I'm just like, this is a lot. <laughs> and it's the same theme for pretty much all of the first four episodes, Minus the fourth one a little bit because it actually talks about something really cool of how like they shot the film. Oh yeah, it was honestly mind blowing. Like I knew they had to use like some form of CG, mm -hmm. but they actually talked about how the entire set was actually video monitors. Oh really? All these TV screens they called it the oh shit what that they called they called it the volume and so the idea is that it's a sphere with all these screens and then up top of the dome is all these screens as well whoa they'll animate or take kind of like life basically like very life-like photos but put it through an actual video game engine so as you're watching it and it connects to a point in the camera so at any point if the camera is moving to change the perspective mm -hmm. you could in the special uh, behind the scenes, you can watch the screen kind of like shift oh, weird. to make adjustments for that. But as you're looking at it, you're like, that's so weird. But if you look at it in camera, it, it flows perfectly as if you're at a real location. Oh, weird. So that one I highly recommend. It's so cool. But yeah, I guess I was expecting more when I'm thinking behind the scenes, I'm thinking of like how they make costumes, looking at concept art because I'm a very visual person. So I want to see those things. Right. I, I'm okay, because again, the fourth episode is called Technology, so they showed the evolution of this technology that he's been working on, the director, John Fasbro, from the Jungle Book, from the Lion King, till now. Okay. Which is really interesting. And then, of course, they go back to this round table where they're talking about it, which I was okay with, because I'm like, okay, I visually see what's going on, and then they're talking about it. Whereas the first three episodes, they just do a lot of talking. Oh, yeah. I wonder, because that reminds me, actually, I just started watching the other day uh, the Imagineering documentary on Disney Plus. All yes! about, like, how they... Yeah, yeah, have you seen it? Making of the Disney Parks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I still haven't watched the last episode. I gotta get on that, but honestly, it is so cool. Yeah, it is very cool. I haven't finished it yet, but that just reminded me, and obviously, now that you've seen it, I can maybe you'll agree with me, too, but there was that one point where they talked about, like, di one of Disney's ideas was to have a movie theater that was, like, a, yeah! basically a sphere. Yeah! So it's like, I wonder I wonder if they took that idea and used it for that, because uh, it's still technically a part of Disney, right? Oh, yeah. Well, they talked a lot about how like George Lucas even at the, at during the prequels was talking about technology like that yeah and how there was somebody else that was trying to approach it differently and how oh, they all came together and like made the volume oh, that's so cool I just didn't realize especially just going back to that documentary you're talking about the Imagineering one and just like the evolution and how much like I guess maybe because again I live in my own bubble and I don't know anything but it was just like Walt Disney's just the face of Disney you know but you don't realize like how much work he put into like you know technology and bettering the future and trying to teach people oh yeah and then what was it um oh i don't know if you're i don't want to say because i don't know if you're there yet i can't remember but they when they're talking have you got to the point where they're talking about building epcot yes okay and how they're talking how they made kind of like the first touch screens available mm -hmm. and that was back in what 19 70 something something like that yeah you know when to think it really did become mainstream and you know in our own hands by what 2005 or something or maybe a little bit later but like you know like that to me was the first time i was like oh yeah touch screens when you know this man was already thinking about this 30 plus years before right well and even like his whole design for epcot was he wanted it to be its own city yeah essentially he wanted to make his own city and then they were like no we can't really do that so we'll turn it into like this kind of miniature little thing mm -hmm. but like say what you want about walt disney he was a super inspiring man like it's amazing how his brain worked and just like the ideas he had and like every everything he did he just wanted to do it for good yeah and i like that every person that he had on his team uh like his imagineering team was somebody who was kind of like 
not the norm. They weren't like a weirdo or outcast or anything <laughs> like that. But you know what I mean? You know, like they, they he wanted creative individuals. Mm-hmm. He didn't want people that were just strictly like logical thinkers or, you know, by the business kind of thing. He wanted people who used their imagination, which is like, hell yeah. Oh, did they talk about um, the haunted house and how they used all the mirror effects? Yes. And how, so like one of the Imagineers was actually the lady's face in the crystal ball. Yeah, her mom. It's her mom. Yeah. And then, of course, um, her daughter now works as Imagineer there. So she goes, yeah, it's really nice sometimes coming and you're the first one in the morning. It's really quiet so she can hear her mom's voice. Yeah. Oh, almost cried. And then they were talking <laughs> about how they like, um, like how they change it up for uh, Halloween slash Christmas. So they... You know, they uh, make it. What what the hell is that movie called? Jack Skellington. Before Christmas. Thank you. I don't, (laughs) you know. So then when they had to do all those updates, she was the one who is now in the crystal ball Mm -hmm. when it's during that. And I just thought that was so cool. Right. So hard. My heart (laughs) grew three sizes and then shattered. (laughs) Yeah, I think that was pretty neat because I remember riding on that ride when we went to Disneyland and uh, and then hearing like the lady at the end being like, hurry back, hurry back. So to know that that's her mom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I'll forever think about that. It's pretty neat. It's just so beautiful. And of course, on top of talking about like all that stuff, it's also the like the evolution of almost like Disney as well, Mm -hmm. because it's all like when Walt dies and like like how the company continues to carry on it's ev- yeah. like it's so if you haven't watched it people watch it <laughs> it is so good you've got a dual cinema gal recommendation yes <laughs> i know i haven't watched the last episode yet but like listen i'm gonna get to it yeah, i'm gonna finish it too it's so good it is it's very very inspiring for sure 100 percent 100 percent so to follow up with our previous episode, which is technically out right now, today, while we're recording well, this. Last week. Yes. <laughs> when this one comes out, it was last week, you know. But this episode that we're recording right now was going to come out next week. So if you're not already confused, anyways, last episode, we were talking about Batwoman. Uh, yes. And then literally that day oh, yeah. after we finished recording, <laughs> there was some news. <laughs> <laughs> no, I shit you not. Me and Kendra finished, and then I did my workout, and then I was just waiting to play some games with my friend. So I think it may have been like four hours had passed, and then you texted me, and you were like, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! And it was this article talking about how uh, Ruby Rose is not returning for season two of Batwoman. <laughs> Yeah, she she's exiting the the show after we after we just talked about it. So it's like, wow. She heard our beef and was like, yeah, I see it. I'll leave. <laughs> I'll get out, which is so crazy to me. It like I read, the, I kind of like read the article, but a lot of it was just a lot of ass kissing. So it's just like, oh, it doesn't really say anything. Yeah, they don't want to disclose anything. Yeah, and I get that they don't want to leave on bad terms. So everybody was just like, oh yeah, it was great working with you. It was such a great opportunity. But yeah, it doesn't really say like why. And she said it was a hard decision. I don't know. Maybe she got offered something better or maybe as we were commenting as she looked bored as hell maybe she was like yeah i don't want to do this no more yeah i know people were speculating it had something to do with that injury that she had. yeah i didn't realize she she got injured and apparently almost got her face paralyzed or something well her i think her whole entire body almost got paralyzed like it was a back injury or like a neck injury of some sort <laughs> but uh she was able to fully recover from it maybe that was part of why she kind of acted a little too uh or a little dry on the show because she just didn't want to. I can't physically move. Get injured again. <laughs> yeah, I am trying my best. <laughs> so I think it's really funny. It's a little, a little sad to hear, but uh, hopefully, you know, if they uh, find the right person, it'll maybe revive the show a little bit or make it a little more interesting. I, I guess, but like, uh, I don't, I don't know, man. I think this one's having a real rough go. Like, to be fair, when Supergirl originally switched. Because I can't remember who was producing it at first. And then they switched it to the CW. Because they, because the, yeah, CTV was like, this is too expensive to make episodes. And they're like, ah, we can do it. No biggie. <laughs> Honestly, I thought at that point that Supergirl wouldn't survive. But it has. Mm-hmm. So who knows? Maybe Batwoman will survive. But I'm very, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just like. Only time will tell. I guess. How do you also explain? Because like, I think that's also going to be weird. Hi, I'm Kate Kane. Yes, Kate, you have not changed at all. (laughs) Everybody knows this is you. See, that's what I was discussing uh, with uh, with Zena. We were saying how, (laughs) like, how are they gonna like make that transition? I think it was Zena who I was talking to about it. 
Zena, if you're there, comment if it was <laughs> you and I talking about it. <laughs> Someone tell me. But uh, we were basically saying, like, how are they going to make that uh, transition on the show? And, and I was saying, well, maybe because of the crisis, like this most recent crisis, all of the multiverses converged. Or maybe they'll make the excuse that, oh, this is another Kate Kane from another universe. Mm. And she's coming in because there can only be one. They can't both exist on the same plane. So she's going to take over. And then that one, you know, Ruby Rose's character will die maybe or disappear or dissolve into into thin air. Who knows what's going to happen? I guess. <laughs> uh, mm. Did, um, so... Star Girl aired. Yes. Did you watch the pilot? I did. What did you think of it? I liked it. It was like it wasn't anything like wow, oh my god, but I like how they shot it. It looked like very cinematic. It was very if it, it felt more like a movie than it did a TV show. Mm. So that was kind of cool. Um again, first episode you can't really judge the show too much on cuz like Yes, you can. <laughs> judge it's it. Just starting. <laughs> it's just starting out, but uh yeah, I thought it was pretty enticing. Your appetizing meal. Nom, nom, nom. I think I'd have to agree on most camps. Uh, it is the start, so it's hard to gauge like where it's going and all that stuff. I think overall, it wasn't offensively bad, so like I'll continue to watch it to see where it goes. Right. <laughs> but I think two things that stood out to me was that weird scene with Joe McHale and the other Owen Wilson brother. <laughs> Luke Wilson, <laughs> yeah, is that he is, yeah, where he's just like, no, the staff can't go to you, and I'm like, oh, okay, haha. He's like, no, really, it can't go to you, and it's like this really long bit, and I was like, this, eh? like, I don't know much about you, Starman, but you seem like you're a dick. <laughs> like, but yeah, I think other than that, I think it could be really fun. Yep, I like the idea of, um, you know. Like, the daughter and the stepfather trying to have a relationship, and maybe this is how they go about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and grow closer together. So, you know, I think I'm in for a little bit. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'll see. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. <laughs> Until it's terrible. <laughs> we have no idea at this point. I am curious, though, if they were able to, f- like, complete their first season, though. Oh, yes. Filming-wise. Because yes. like, normally... I follow almost everybody on Instagram from, like, all the CW shows and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And luckily, like, a lot of them are pretty good at, like, posting, like, stuff like rap parties and, like, uh, what's going on. Yeah. And and their films. Because that's why sometimes I'll follow them is they'll usually post behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, oh, these are actually pretty cool people, too. So, you know, it's a win-win. Yep. But... Yeah, sorry. So my point at hand is that I have no idea if Stargirl ever actually finished filming their first season. I'm I'm hoping they do because, again, like Batwoman being cut a couple episodes, I think, is just going to hurt them. So hopefully this Stargirl has, or I guess to be fair, I don't even know if it's going to be a full 20 episodes. Maybe it'll be a shorter one because it started so late. Yeah, but who knows? We will find out. <laughs> mm-hmm. Although I think tonight is the finale of uh dc legends of tomorrow oh really yeah so but of course i don't think i'll be watching that for a couple days because tonight is csi (laughs) nice as i was telling kendra i love csi but sometimes i'll watch it and be like i can't trust nobody i can't trust anybody i will die if i trust anybody i will die (laughs) somehow but it won't be because of that show that's for sure i'm too sure no, we can't sing the song. We don't have the rights. <laughs> have the rights. We really don't have the rights. <laughs> but um, as we said last time, we did the 48-hour Okotoks Film Challenge. So now we're going to be working on um, the Edmonton uh, Short Film Festival, the God a Minute Film Festival. Yes. Where you have to submit a film that is one minute in length. <laughs> no more. Maybe a little less if you want, but obviously I think if you only have a minute, you want to maximize that. And no audio. Yeah, it's a silent film. It's a tricky. Which makes it a little challenging, yes. We've done it how many times now? Three? Three times. Three years in a row now we've uh, submitted? Or, actually, I think we've done four. Is it four now? Well, at least we both have gotten, you've gotten one in and then we both got one in. So twice we've gotten into the festival, but we've submitted four times and then if we do it this year it'll be five times wow Mm -hmm. that's crazy and hopefully because 
you know, during quarantine, we have unlimited time. Um, what's because what's nice is is that they'll let you submit up to three films per person. I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. So, and we always talk about trying to get at least um more than one in. We never usually <laughs> we usually are able to get in like one each or just one one together. Yeah. Well, just like that. Boom, another podcast done. <laughs> and me and Kendra being like, what? We already talked for this long? Yeah, because we are just two little chatty boxes. Yes, we are. But uh, thank you for tuning in once again. Uh, we appreciate your support. Yes. Have a great Tuesday and a great rest of your week. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts uh, and you have any ideas of what you want us to chat about, leave it in the comments. We will talk forever. Oh, yes. Forever. <laughs> But yeah, stay safe, be good to each other, and um, hope to s- not see you, but we hope you come, because you're not going to see it, you know, you know, we just hope you come back for more. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'm clearly losing my mind, but it's okay. This will all end one day. I don't know what's real anymore. I don't either. <laughs> Alrighty. Goodbye. <laughs> monkey, monkey, monkey and slap. slap. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs>